What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's cracking? What's cracking? What's cracking? Back with another one from the Larry Bird Vault. 10 straight minutes, y'all. 10 straight minutes of Larry Bird facts that will change your mind on who is the GOAT. Now, hell. We hear these GOAT debates all the time, yada, yada, yada. And, of course, they're all subjective. But, uh, you know, before when I started this channel, I had Larry Bird in, in a certain range. And I, I knew what I felt, a decent amount of Larry Bird, enough for me to say this guy's definitely a top 10 player. And I had him somewhere between, I don't know, five or eight, something like that. But then, you know, after really, really, really digging my heels into the mud of Larry Bird and really learning more about him, I said, you know what? I got him too low on my all-time list. So now Larry Bird is number three all-time for me. Anyway, let's get into these, uh, these facts about the boy that is Larry Legend. Shout out to the Bird Gang. And let's see what Squad Dawkins has to say about Larry Bird. Let's get into it. With a 6'9 inches frame and an unparalleled basketball IQ, Larry Bird was a force to be reckoned with on the court. His silky smooth shooting stroke, combined with a fierce competitive spirit, made him one of the most feared and respected players of his era. Beyond the numbers and accolades, Larry Bird's impact on the game extends far beyond his statistical achievements. He embodied the blue-collar work ethic and the never-say-die attitude of the heartland. His grit, determination, and clutch performances in critical moments became the stuff of legends. Welcome to the Squad Dawkins channel. Here we give you 10 straight minutes of awesome facts on the great Larry Bird. Nobody, nobody worked as hard as Larry. He was the first guy there. He was the last guy to leave. He wore that body out with the jumpers and the running and the movement and the and the concentration and the focus and the discipline and the sacrifice, he had it all. Larry Bird dominated his era, and no fact may better prove that point than this one. For six straight seasons from 1981 to 1986, Bird was either the MVP or the runner-up, and he also finished in the top two spots in seven out of eight seasons from 1981 to 1988. Larry Legend is the only person in NBA history to win league MVP, coach of the year, and executive of the year. From the 1984-85 season through the 1987-88 season, Larry shot 51.7% from the field, 41.4% from three-point range, and 90.1% from the free throw line. That means Larry Legend doesn't just have a 50-40-90 season on his resume, but he has a four-season stretch of 50-40-90 percentages. During that stretch, he averaged 28.1 points per game, other than the great Steph Curry and Kevin Durant, no player has ever scored that many points per game in a single season while putting up 50, 40, 90 percentages. And again, Larry did that over a four-year stretch. Larry Bird has one of the greatest performances of all time that people don't talk about quite enough. Officially, only four players in NBA history have ever achieved the incredible quadruple double, and Larry Legend was very close to joining this elite few. It was on February 18, 1985 against the Utah Jazz. According to Larry himself, this may have been the greatest game of his career as he poured in 30 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, 9 steals, and 2 blocks on 59.1 shooting. The Celtics were destroying the Jazz in just about every aspect and at the end of the third quarter, they were leading by 22 points. Due to this, Bird didn't even play in the fourth quarter. That means he almost put up an insane quadruple double in only three quarters. Casey Jones was the Celtics head coach, and when he realized early in the fourth quarter that Larry was only one still shy of the historic quadruple double, he asked him if he would like to go back into the game, but Bird refused and said he already did enough damage. His shot was just so, like, perfect. You know, and, and not only was it perfect, you know, my mother-in-law nicknamed his, his jump shot Silent Death because when he shot it, the ball just like rolled in the air and it was almost like it was playing a song the way it was like just 
moving in the air, and then it would just swish through. Larry shot 37.6% from three-point distance, which is an even greater percentage than Damian Lillard's, who now many people are putting in the conversation of the greatest shooters of all time. Larry was also much better from three-point range in the second half of his career over the first. The reason for this is because Larry's rookie season in the NBA was also the year that the NBA introduced the three-point shot, which was 1979. This means that Bird wasn't practicing the three ball throughout his years in high school and college. Instead, he literally developed his three-point shot during his years in the NBA, and he hadn't mastered it until the mid-80s, which drastically affected his career percentages. On top of that, Bird was an even better shooter when it mattered the most, as he shot 42.2% from three-point range over his career in the NBA Finals. That finals percentage is greater than the finals efficiency of both Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. This guy, I think he was born to play basketball. Seeing him come in and, and making the adjustment early, taking a team that had won 20 games the year before or next year, I mean, you know, they're 40 plus and the next year is 60. Larry Bird had one of the best rookie campaigns in recent memory. Even if he came when he was supposed to compete with other elite stars like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Julius Irving to win an MVP award. The forward averaged 21.3 points and 10.4 rebounds per game while also showing the capability to dominate defenses. Unsurprisingly, Larry accumulated MVP votes and managed to finish fourth in the MVP race as a rookie. He immediately turned the Celtics franchise around. A year after winning 29 games, Boston, with Bird leading the charge, won 61 games. Bird won Rookie of the Year, shooting 47.4% from the field, 40.6% from three, and 83.6% from the line. The Celtics had yet another superstar in their history, but this one was seemingly a little different. At age 23, Bird only finished runner-up to Kareem Irving and George Gervin in the MVP race. In the 1980-81 season, a year after making the Eastern Conference Finals with rookie Bird on the squad as the best rookie in the league, the Boston Celtics once again had their star for the season. Bird went out with a bang, competing in 82 games. The forward's numbers were very consistent, as he posted 21.2 points and 10.9 rebounds per game while leading the Celtics to the best record in the East. No team could stop the player when he was cooking as a scorer, passer, and rebounder. The Celtics ended up defeating the Houston Rockets in the NBA Finals, which capped off an all-time great season by Larry and his first NBA championship. Bird finished second three times before he finally captured his well-deserved MVP award. Bird's stat line during the 1984 season was incredibly complete with 24.2 points, 10.1 rebounds, 6.6 .6 assists, 1.8 steals, and 0.9 blocks per game. As expected, Bird won his first MVP award and also winning in seven games against the Los Angeles Lakers in the NBA Finals. Bird had the highest MVP finish of his career to date in the 1984-85 season when he posted 28.7 points, 10.5 rebounds, 6.6 .6 assists, 1.6 steals, and 1.2 blocks per game. He finished first in the MVP race. The superstar Celtics player came ahead of legends Magic Johnson and Moses Malone. Bird had the numbers to win the MVP award, and the narrative was on his side because the team finished first in the East. Bird began staking his claim as possibly the most dominant talent at the small forward spot in NBA history. Larry was also one of the most clutch players in NBA history. He had numerous game-winning shots in both regular season and the playoffs, and he was known for making the big play when his team needed it most, whether on offense or defense. Larry was arguably the greatest passing forward of all time. His court vision high basketball IQ and team play was off the charts. This aspect of his game is sometimes overlooked because of the reality that he played in the same era as Magic Johnson. But as far as 6'9 small forwards go, Larry was as close to Magic's passing skills. Larry averaged a whopping 10 rebounds per game over the course of his career. He wasn't just a solid rebounder, he was one of the all-time greats at it. Among primary small forwards, Larry has the third greatest rebound per game average in NBA history. These are one of those stats that testify to the hustle and heart that he played with each and every night of his career. Bird was also an underrated defender. Larry played with heart and effort on both sides of the basketball every game. He wasn't the greatest shot blocker, but he did average more blocks per game over his career than LeBron James has. Larry also averaged a high 1.7 steals per game over his career. 
He was tenacious and scrappy, and he was a quality on vault offender. He also made three all-defense teams in his career. In 1985, Bird was at home with his mother and was wanting to help her build her new driveway. While Bird was out there shoveling gravel for his mom, something happened that would change the rest of his career. Bird brutally injured his back, which would then be an ongoing battle with pain and spasms for the rest of his career. Ultimately, these back issues would play a part in Bird leaving the game earlier than many other athletes. Though while this injury begun and took place in 1985, Bird still played seven seasons after that injury. In 1986, with the back injury and the enormous pain, Bird won his third MVP in a row. He is the only player to ever accomplish this since the NBA merger. I'm really proud to, to receive this award for the third time, but I really don't feel that my career is over. I think I can win it some more. The best part about Larry Bird wasn't the fact he won three straight MVPs. It wasn't how he won Rookie of the Year and then guided the Boston Celtics to three championships in the 80s. What's best about Bird is he never changed. With the Celtics, he was the same guy he was at Indiana State and the same guy he was at Springs Valley High School in French Lick, Indiana. Bird never cared about glory. Fame and fortune never changed him. Individual achievements didn't motivate him. He was all about winning. Tell us in the comments, what is your favorite Larry Bird moment? And if you enjoy this video, hit the like button, share, and subscribe. For even more basketball content, subscribe to our other channels, Free Dawkins and Vintage Dawkins, and follow us on social media. You know, he brought up some excellent points there. Um, a lot of that stuff I had heard already, though I don't necessarily memorize it all. But uh, all strong facts um, for Larry Bird, whether it's a GOAT debate or just comparing him against any other player, th th these are... These provide strong talking points in a debate. Or just being informative, just informing people, hey, this is what Larry Bird, not even a debate, this is what Larry Bird was, is a, it was about, bro. This is the type of player he was. I, I, I just want to enlighten you on arguably the greatest Celtic, who would who is the greatest Celtic of all time. My opinion, he is the greatest Celtic of all time. But uh, for all the stats people out there, I, I'm not really big on stats. I think stats... Are, are important uh, when put in their proper context, but I'm not one of these guys that just picks isolated stats and then tries to put a blanket over it and say this explains who this entire player was and, and stuff like that. I put everything, I tried to put everything in their proper context. And one thing about Larry Bird that is often, you know, undervalued underappreciated and underrated is Larry Bird's defensive abilities, his defensive prowess. Any Larry Bird fan would tell you. Any Larry Bird fan would tell you. Not just me. Larry Bird wasn't a lockdown defender by any means. No, he had moments, yes. But Larry Bird was very, very, very smart, had a hyper ability to anticipate offensive schemes player and ball movement and that often made him a great help defender and made him a great off ball uh, yeah, off ball defender or playing the passing lanes rather and he was a terror in those aspects of defense not to mention rebounding is part of defense, right? You have to secure the ball in order to go on offense, right? How I see it. And like I said, I'm not big on stats, but here are some interesting advanced statistics. It's everybody likes to throw advanced analytics around, especially to support certain players whom I will not name. Um, but, and I know that these defensive advanced analytics aren't always like the best or accurate when trying to prove a very specific point as much as the offensive ones can be and even those you got to put in their context um, but it, it, just to give you a general idea of like effectiveness all right Larry Bird defensive rebounding percentage all time in the NBA all time he ranks 71st block percentage ranks 242nd still percentage ranks 132nd defensive rating ranks 63rd Defensive box plus or minus ranks 37th. Defensive win shares ranks 30th. 
And even with those defensive win shares, four times, four times in Larry Bird's career, he led the NBA in defensive win shares. Seven times in his career, he was top five in defensive win shares. In 1983, Bird finished tied for third place in Defensive Player of the Year award. That ain't too shabby. And people don't like to mention this. People like to conveniently leave off certain players all defensive selections. But Larry Bird made second team all defense NBA three times. Three times. And also another point to add about those defensive win shares. I, I had dug this up. Bird rank Bird ranks 33rd all time in defensive win shares, like I said. With 59 for his career, ahead of amazing defenders like Dennis Rodman and Chris Paul. And like I said, it's a complicated stat. I don't think anybody would say he's a better defensive player than Rodman or Chris Paul. But when just trying to analyze this stuff and measure uh, how effect or how a player contributes to the overall effectiveness of the team's defense while on the floor, it can give you a pretty good idea of how Larry Bird impacts that end of the floor for his team when he's on the court. Furthermore, what makes Larry Bird's ability to even get on that list as many times as he did was considering the era, man. Back then, especially at his position, at the forward position, man, there was stiff competition. There were some defensive juggernauts at the forward position. So just because Larry Bird didn't make a bunch of all defensive teams doesn't mean that he was just some slouch of a defender for the majority of his career. There are a certain amount of slots and people that can be added to these teams each year. And when you got a, a, a long list of players that are all eligible and even superior defensively, it's, it's, it's going to be hard. But unfortunately, only a certain amount of spots are available. But this is, what, this is where it's on people to watch the game, get the context, so you really know what kind of defender he really was. And then you know, compared to the field, it's just tough competition. Man, they had Bobby Jones, a.k.a. the Secretary of Defense, salute. Sidney Moncrief, his own teammate, Kevin McHale. Hell, Michael Cooper, Buck Williams. I mean, they had some defensive juggernauts back then, man. So, the fact that Larry even made it on there as many times as he did is rather impressive, if you ask me. And, and, and Bird's rebounding numbers were absolutely phenomenal. Over 10 rebounds on his career for a guy that is supposed that, that most people will say, slow unathletic white guy I'll be the first to tell you was Bird the most athletic no was Bird the fastest no could Bird jump the highest no but to just throw this label over him like he was just some freaking slug is just completely inaccurate I've seen this guy outrun plenty of players on a fast break before just saying but like I said, deceptively quick, very quick hands, all that stuff. And but like I said, for him for him to be so unathletic, how the hell is he damn near out rebounding so many players throughout his entire career? This wasn't no fluke. It's for an entire career. He out here doing this. Battling in the paint, boxing out, slipping and sliding off a of body, slithering through, getting position. Hell. I've seen enough highlights of Larry Bird just anticipating where the ball is going to come off the rim and beating the four or five guys under the rim to the basketball. The anticipation, the calculation, and in there jostling and fighting with people. People that are supposedly S-tier, A-tier rebounders. Bird out there grabbing boards, boy. Out with the outlet, outlet pass. Get the fast break going. Quarterback style. A phenomenal rebounder, man. And I look at players today, you know, like LeBron James, for an example. 
for all his athleticism, supposed to be one of the best athletes to ever play the game. Six foot eight, monster, jump out the gym, strong as hell. He pales, he pales in comparison to Larry Bird as a rebounder. Pales. It says a lot. It says a lot, man. And when people say Bird is the best all-around basketball player they've ever seen, I won't argue with them. I mean, that, I, I won't. I won't. I mean, the guy could do a lot. He could do a lot. He could do damn near anything. And, you know, he's, he's a great shooter. Despite what people like J.J. Redick like to put out in the airways, Larry Bird is one of the greatest three-point shooters of all time. Yes, he is. Hell, you put him in today's league where the three-point shot is weaponized, and he brought this up in the video. Back then, Larry Bird had to work his way into three-point shooting. It wasn't a thing. There was no three-point line when he came in the league initially, man. Initially, there was no three-point line. And it wasn't it wasn't weaponized back then. But to say that man wasn't a, one of the greatest shooters of all time, you're nuts. Back-to-back, two-back, three-point contest champion. And hell, even back then, what he was taking, like maybe two or three three-point shots a game, one of those probably being half-court heaves from time to time, you know what I mean? How it is weaponized today, Larry Bird would be taking like five to ten three-pointers a game, and I guarantee you he'd be stroking it. He would undoubtedly be a top-five three-point shooter in today's NBA. And that's me being generous, not thinking about it. Just definitely top-five. Come on, man. Incredible passer. And his, his his assist numbers, that's why I'm not big in the numbers, man. People are like, oh, this guy averages more assists. Okay, yeah, cool, but put it in the context, man. Bird was an exceptional, exceptional passer. If you watch him play, exceptional passer. But he didn't hold on to the ball. He didn't monopolize the ball like a Russell Westbrook or Harden or LeBron or these other guys were just holding on to it, either, either waiting for a shot or waiting for the assist. It, it wasn't his game. He had a natural feel, a natural flow for the game could play off ball and was still racking up high assist numbers without having just to be the straight up focal point of the offense every single possession holding on to the ball nah he knew he knew when to make the right play didn't really force anything either wasn't fishing for assists just naturally naturally exceptional passer man didn't give a damn about box scores. Didn't give a damn about numbers. None of that stuff. He just wanted to win, and he played the game how he see how he saw. Well, well, he played the game the right way, but his playing style would be whatever the team needed in that moment or in that game against that team. He gave whatever the team needed. You need me to need me to give give you more buckets today. I'm gonna give you more buckets. You need something more balance. I'll give you that too. I'm just saying, man. To me, he's the greatest uh, small forward of all time. That's my opinion. But that's a video for another day. Anywho, great video here by Squad Dawkins. Y'all, let me know what you think about it. Am I off the mark? Let me know. Where do you have Larry Bird all the time? Or what do you feel about Larry Bird? Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and I'll catch you on the next one. We out, baby.